Hey everyone, it's Avenger Green, and before we get into our look at Alan Scott, The Green Lantern, issue number two, I want to address something that's a bit controversial among comic fans. Retcons. If you ask any a good amount of com long-time comic book fans, and the readers, they'll tell you that retcons are some of the worst things about the big two superhero universes, and some who are just kind of eh towards them. It's easy to see why. Sometimes retcons tend to make simple stories or origins more convoluted than they need to be, and can sometimes break continuity in an attempt to fix it. But like with any kind of trope or cliche you can think of, the liar revealed, chosen one, all that stuff, I personally believe that all comes down to how it's executed rather than just the existence itself. Hell, most of the best stuff involving DC's Golden Age heroes wouldn't exist without creators like Roy Thomas, James Robinson, and Jeff Johns, once without using some retroactive continuity in stuff like All-Star Squadron or Justice Society of America. And Alan Scott issue 2 shows more of that good kind of retconning, and filling in some of the blanks in Al the first Green Lantern's backstory and adding some pathos. So, continuing from issue 1, an Alan tells Dobby the story of what happens after what happened after Johnny's death at sea. Alan's captain figured out the nature of their relationship, but considering Alan saved a bunch of their shipmates, they gave him leave to check himself into Arkham Asylum, um, to straighten himself out. And as we'll see, this place was terrible even before they housed inmates like the Joker, and we'll see this especially with Billy, a trans woman that befriends Alan during his stay. Believe it or not, Billy isn't a new character, but rather a new interpretation of an existing character, though one that, to my knowledge, has appeared in two panels before this issue. See, in Alan's first, first original origin story in all American comics, we saw an old coon in an asylum named Billings forge the magic lamp that would become Alan's Green Lantern. Yes, this Billings is Billy, who we learned was committed to Arca by her family for, well, being her. This is what I mean by good retconning, because it was just kind of a fact that the, a lantern made by an asylum inmate would just happen to show up on the train Alan was on. Having Alan in the asylum fills the gaps and doesn't really contradict anything we've seen before, mostly because there wasn't a lot there to begin with. We also get some foreshadowing of Alan's dialogue with Billy and later a, a tragic scene that start to paint the picture of why the first GL stayed in the closet for decades after this, besides societal expectations. Uh, mostly because of tragedy. And we see that tragedy continue in what's ultimately revealed to be Billy's fate. fate. That she was lobotomized by the asylum staff in an attempt to cure her. And that's another amazing plus for this issue. It is a scathing middle finger to asylums, gay conversion therapy, and pretty much any kind of therapy that involves almost basically lobotomizing innocent people for just being different. Considering this wasn't only done to LGBT people in the 30s and 40s, but also to people on the autism spectrum, it rightly deserves to be called out for the horrible practice it was. Sheridan does not hold back with this issue. And we see that even more, more with the head doctor, or because he find, he steals Alan's journal all about and reads about how Alan was starting to think that if God made him this way, then maybe there isn't really th anything wrong with guys like Alan or even people like Billy. The doctor revokes Alan's right to check himself out and the staff end up basically torturing him. Yep. This turns out to be the straw that breaks the camel's back because Alan escapes, escapes during, an in, during a ride by the inmates alongside a handsome lad named Robert. And yeah, now I've said the last, and this leads us to something that I actually you gotta give if the artist Torney credit for. Or I said in the last ish last review that his art has been on the bland side, but there's one instance I had to give him massive credit for. So as the story continues, we actually see Alan's origin from all American comics, though with the added caveat uh, that his assistant Jimmy was actually his newest lover at the time. Anyone who knows Alan's origin knows it knows that the train he was on was sabotaged by a business rival named Decker, killing everyone except for Alan, who was saved by the lantern. And we and let me say that this splash page of the disaster is really damn good. All the fire, the debris, the smoke, the train falling, and the big crackoom. This is a beautiful shot of raw destruction. Well played, Mr. Tormy. 
me. Your characters may be a bit too stiff for my taste, but you draw some pretty good environmental destruction. And so, yeah, as the flashback wraps up, up, Alan and Dobby start putting together that all these events, and Alan hearing the words, first we bring death, then life multiple times in his life, all those who get close to Alan, romantically or platonically, he ending up suffering horrific fates, and the imposter Green Lantern we've been hearing about, and come to the conclusion that someone, probably related to the Crimson Flame of Death, is targeting Alan. And based on that last page, we'll be seeing that person pretty soon. So, that's Alan Scott, the Green Lantern, issue 2. This video is a bit more on the rambly, even more talkative side compared to some of my, my other comic videos, but what can I say? This issue gave me quite a bit to talk about. And it also pretty much justified my excitement for these Golden Age minis, because seeing the focus on characters like Alan on an individual level outside of just being part of the JSA, but a different writer other than Robinson or Johns is really refreshing. And here's hoping that streak continues for the rest of the series. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you always know when I upload a new video. Until next time, have a great day.